Welcome, Chocolate Files. My name is Clay Gordon for the Chocolate Wire, and we're here this afternoon uh, talking to Sander Wolf. Sander is the founder of the Dallas Chocolate Festival, and this year, because of COVID, they've got something special that they're announcing. So, Dallas, why, uh, Sander, why don't you tell us what you've got going on this year? Hey, Clay. Well, we can't gather together in person like we used to. We can't put a thousand people in a room and, and just uh, go wherever our nose takes us next. So the concept is to bring the festival to the attendee. So we're going to have a virtual event where you can go see everybody's virtual exhibitor booth. You can go to virtual classes, but you can order a box that has samples from all the exhibitors. So you can get that sensory experience of eating some chocolate and then looking at the exhibitor's booth and then maybe ask them a question about it or get a tour of their factory and kind of doing the best we can to keep things going and bring the event into everybody's houses. So who came up with the idea of the festival in a box? Is that your concept or is, is, did it come out of a larger uh, conversation, conversation that you're having with the exhibitors and participants in previous festivals? I think a lot of people had the exact same idea pretty much the exact same time. It's just who would actually do it. <laughs> um, I've been to, um, just to keep myself entertained, I've been to a lot of chocolate tastings that are online. Uh, Megan Giller had one. Um, with Om Nom, that was really cool. Uh, a local place, Scardello, did a cheese and wine tasting that was really good. And you would go to the shop or get something mailed to you and then go online and see the, the show. Um, and the part that it was missing was really the scale. And so it was, can we scale that up? Can we do that for 500 people? Can we do that for more than that? And get them all something that's interesting so everybody has a unique experience and it's not all timed at the exact same second, but they all get to have kind of a cool experience. Um, so how so did, so how did you manage it. the scale aspect of it? Well, we haven't done it yet, so <laughs> I don't know if we managed it. <laughs> okay. Well, that, that, the concept is that, um, you know, we'll plan for 500, see how it goes, and we'll have the exhibitors send in their samples. We'll take them up, we'll box them, and then um, we have a partnership with a local company that does kind of an Uber thing. So they have their own fleet of cars and their own uniform drivers that are you know, paid living wages and stuff. And so they'll be able to pick up the boxes from the chilled warehouse where they'll be stored and deliver them to people's door within a two hour window that they can select. So you know, from start to finish, we're controlling safety because it'd be minimal touches and also um, quality. We're not going to need ice packs. It will be air conditioned the whole way. And so that's kind of how we're doing the scale that uh, the company has enough cars and enough drivers and the organizational software to figure out how to route it all so that they can get it all out there. And so the idea is if the virtual festival is having happening over a weekend, you'll be able to deliver everything to people on Thursday or Friday before the festival starts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, when they buy their tickets, they're their box will come with a ticket to the festival and they'll be able to select the two hour window they want to deliver. So, you know, I, I have been, all before the festival, but you know, I can't help that. Well, they need to buy an extra box in that particular. There you go. Can I get a twofer please? Please, sir, may I have another, may I have another. <laughs> um, so um, I remember, I've, I've been lucky enough that um, when I've been down for the festival, I did three times. Uh, so not in 2019, but I was there in 2018. Um, no, you were there last year for the because it was the tenth anniversary, and you so, did a. All right, so I was there in I was there day. last year. Uh, mm -hmm. My sense of time has gone completely <laughs> crazy in the last four months. It's like trying to figure things out. Um, I've never, uh, I've always been a guest because I've been a speaker and a presenter. I've never actually had to buy a ticket to walk in the front door. So right. how does how does the cost of this tasting box compare with what they would norm what somebody would normally expect to pay for just a walk in ticket for the festival? It's a little bit more. Um, it's a little bit more, but then you're not having to park and all that stuff. Um, but it's reasonable. We're, we're charging uh, 50 bucks for the box, and then as many as you get shipped to one address is $10. So, so yeah. And as I remember, you, some of the tasting classes and other things, there was a markup charge. So you pay to walk in the front door, and if you wanted to go to a class, a class might cost you extra. That's what we did uh, most recently in San Francisco um, back in March, in the last moments before everything got crazy. 
um, in Dallas, it's always, well, in Dallas, we've had um, the hands-on classes that had an extra fee. And they were done like we did a, um, we've traditionally done a bean to bar class. And in the bean to bar class, you literally have, uh, you know, three or four chocolate makers in the class and they're teaching you and they bring in a sack of beans and you leave with a, a, a well-tempered bar. Um, and so we've charged for that class. Um, if you just go to the classes during the event, uh, like the one you did where um, people get to ask you all kinds of questions, that one's included in the price so people can learn. So, um... How, how are the exhibitors reacting? I mean, you've got a, a good number of people who said, sign me up for this, um, because, you know, obviously in these times, you, you still need to market your products and services. People still need to know about you. Um, sampling is one of the best ways to learn about products. Um, so how, does, how, does the, how is the response from the exhibitors in previous years? This year? so, which is a quick way to say, how many samples will I get in my box? <laughs> <laughs> We're aiming for, you know, more than you would want to eat at one time. Um, you know, you can actually go through the event on a couple of days and see all the things. Um, it's kind of a mixed bag out there. There's some people that, you know, have done a real good job of pivoting their business to something that's more online. Um, some of the places that had more of a physical presence or they're selling, um, you know, if they're selling mostly ice cream or things like that, that doesn't translate as well, the mail order. Um, they're having a harder time with it. And it's really, the people that have really pivoted their businesses, I think are responding first. Um, and then we'll work. And then that's probably a third of them. And then a third of them are just, just can't pay attention to anything right now. And then um, um, kind of another third that are just digging through everything. And so, you know, they'll get to it. <laughs> So we're doing good, it's just taking a minute, but it's hard too because usually we start planning for things and all the booths are figured out by June. And usually we go to the uh, fancy food show in New York and that's kind of when you get the last few exhibitors to um, commit because they need some time to prep for it and everything. But, you know, this is a, uh, we're planning this whole thing in three months just because there's just nothing else you can do. You know, everybody's winging it now. So we try to do the best you can and get the word out about, um, the chocolate people that are doing cool stuff. So, well, that's it's it's great to hear. Uh, are you going to be shipping boxes um, outside of um, the Dallas area for those people like me in New York <laughs> who would like to be able to participate in in one way or another? I mean, will I be able to order one and get one? Yeah, we're, we're going to have uh, three options. So, one is the box uh, delivered locally. That's where the majority of our attendees are. Um, we're also planning on having the ability to ship some boxes, so we will need ice for those. And then if uh, you've already eaten all the chocolate you ever care to eat in, in the world, um, you can just pay five bucks and go to the exhibits and stuff and see the classes. Well, that's, that's very cool. So if you're in some place like halfway around the world, for example, and you know that you're not gonna be able to get a shipment delivered to you in time, but yet still you might want to have an opportunity to sit in on a tasting and see what it is that people have to say or some other class you'll be able to participate in that. Yeah, or just visit the uh, visit the exhibitor booths and chat with the people, you know, because there's real-time interaction and there'll be real-time uh, text and video interaction. So the chance to meet all your buddies if you're quarantined at home. So I know you mentioned earlier that you did the, the chocolate experience in San Francisco. I mean, is this something that, and is this something you plan to do for the other festivals that you're involved in, or based on the success in Dallas, you're going to go look at uh, the possibility of doing this in other kinds of ways? I think we're going to see how Dallas goes first, but also, uh, you know, what are the rules? Um, it's changing every day what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. And so if everybody's quarantined and you can't even have businesses open to assemble the boxes and stuff, you know, it's just not going to work. And that's part of the reason for doing the online thing and uh, kind of ramping it up quickly. It's You just don't know what the rules are going to be in another month. So trying to plan for uncertainty is a very, very challenging place for everyone to be. You just don't know what it, you just don't know where things are going to, we're going to be. Right. It's a moving and it, target. And... Right. And it keeps you from making long-term plans, which is kind of hard. Everything you do, it's like, okay, in the next month, I think whatever happens, I'll be okay. Three months from now, who knows? <laughs> right. No, absolutely, absolutely. So I am going to put a direct link to the festival awesome. um, in the description here. 
And if I get really, really fancy, I'll, I'll generate a title card and it will also be included in it. Um, uh -huh. Is there anything else that people need to know? So you're going to accept PayPal and other forms of payment. So people just go on and with a credit card, pay for things. Um, with a credit card. Yeah. Okay. So the ones that'll be delivered, they'll be sold through Alto, the um, ride service that'll deliver them so they can get their routing and stuff done. And the rest will be credit card through the DallasChocolate.org website. This is going to be right on the heels of the official announcement, but what I will say to everyone, if you're interested in attending this um, chocolate festival in a box, that I would not wait until mid-August or the end of August to get your ticket, if this is something that interests you. Now, I, I, I have to admit that from the time I went to the first festival, which was in uh -huh. Addison and a small tabletop, you know, one-day show for the first fun. couple of years. <laughs> yeah, very, very different. So last year's festival was over the weekend and occupied just this really fabulous art center facility in downtown Dallas. I mean, yeah. it's just a really a fabulous venue and it is. lots more, um, lots more makers. And one of the things that really has impressed me about uh, not only has the community grown, and that's not only the maker community, but the people who support the local maker community, just the, 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 the amount of, you know, innovative flavors and products and the way people are doing, I, I'm just, I'm just looking at the amazing trajectory of what's going on. Um, in in Texas has been really quite um, rewarding for me as an observer of the as an observer well, of the industry. I, you know, it's all because I run such a great festival, right? <laughs> but you know, it, it honestly it has nothing to do with that. It's just, I mean, from the last ten years, sourcing has gotten better, equipment's gotten better, education's gotten better, um, uh, people appreciating handmade foods has gotten bigger. It's you know, we're just kind of riding a wave. It's the whole industry, the whole chocolate industry over the last 10 years has just been amazing to watch it grow. Well, that's certainly, that's certainly very true, but not every city of the size of Dallas supports a maker community and then a sophisticated consumer community in the way that Dallas does. Yes, San Francisco, yes, Portland, yes, Seattle, right here in New York, Washington, D.C., but when I think about, you know, larger chocolate festivals that have grown from uh -huh. relatively modest roots into something which, you know, people plan for right. uh, attending, um, you know, Dallas is a city in the country that has managed to do this and not all of them have. Some of it is, some of it is um, due to the hard work and vision and perseverance that you personally and your partners have put into this. I mean, this is you know, something that it requires not only passion, but an enormous amount of dedication and an enormous amount of hard work. It keeps me entertained. <laughs> it keeps you entertained. Well, right. As I was mentioned yesterday in my conversation with Lauren Adler, if you're working with chocolate and you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Right, right. And, and I'm, I'm never more popular than when I'm hanging out with chocolatiers, you know, hey, what's that you got? What's that? You know, let's try something. <laughs> It's everybody loves chocolate, and that's what makes it fun. That is what it is that makes it fun. So, Sandra, I want to say thank you very much for spending some time here this sure. afternoon with me. If people have any questions, um, again, link in the description below. They can follow up with the organization. And um, I'm going to be ordering my box because I want to be able to participate. I want to participate, uh, even if I'm not going to be in, in, in Texas. I wish I wish I could be there. Uh, but um, and, and that's. that's I got to tell you, that's the silver lining of this. The silver lining of this is that you may not have been able to go before because you had to do the plane fare and the hotel or, you know, we were just talking about Omnom. Maybe they couldn't participate before because they had to fly from Iceland. Now it's, it's all video and that's the silver lining. Instead of somebody showing a slide deck of their factory, we'll get to see a tour of their factory. And so... So somebody can walk around with a camera phone and actually do a... a, a, a that's the silver lining of going to a virtual event. So, right. so it sounds like there are going to be a number of surprises in store for people. We're working on a lot of cool things. Well, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to seeing what you have to deliver this year. I've been a, I've been a big fan of the show since the very beginning, and I'm glad to hear that uh, you've been able to take something which could have been just sort of a devastating blow to what it is that you're doing and found a way uh, to be able to turn it into a positive. And I hope it's you know fabulously successful not only for you, but also for the exhibitors who've chosen to participate in it, and for those of us who are going to be tuning in uh, at long distance in order to be able to participate in the show. So we wish you well, and we'll check back in closer to the date of the show and maybe afterwards and see how things go to a, a post-mortem. 
and we'll see how things go. But again, thank you very much for participating in the Chocolate Wire interview this afternoon, Sander, and uh, everybody else. Um, we'll see you the next time. All right. Thanks. Thanks as always for your support. Though.